Welcome everyone again to another episode of Mommy, Heal Thyself. And today I get the wonderful, wonderful, wonderful pleasure of interviewing George Bentley. Now, this gentleman is phenomenal. He is nationally recognized as an expert author, a speaker, aging in place specialist, and consumer advocate. He's one of the leading legal, business, and consumer advocacy minds in the country. Once described by U.S. District Judge Court, Henry Woods, as a true Renaissance man. Now, following the death of his mother in a nursing home due to health issues stemming from a preventable fall, George committed his life to discovering how to avoid this from happening to others. He also created medical hydrotherapy program unique and revolutionary therapeutic process designed to fight degenerative age-related health problems and assist seniors and the health challenge to remain in their own homes. This program has been so well received by the medical profession that virtually every doctor has prescribed it for their patients who, de who desire to enroll. So now, George, the first question that I want to know is, how did you get into this field in the first place? Well, well, I, I tell people, you know, I, I wasn't looking for this business, Michelle. I, it, it kind of found me. And, I, you know, I was living my life and I went through it with my parents. I mean, and one of the big things I learned from this, this whole experience is about being proactive. So I, my mom, 83, she fell and hurt herself uh, in the bathtub, downward spiral medically, we ended up losing her in a nursing home and so everything with my mom was reactive and hindsight um, healthy as a horse until she hurt herself my dad on the other side of the coin was not healthy at 83 had all kinds of problems but when we lived through that with my mom and we ended up losing her in a nursing home my dad said i'll never go into a nursing home george and i want you to help me make that happen and i'm like got it so that's really where the proactive side started so from the time my dad was 83 till the time he died at 102, I, I was constantly exploring, learning, trying to do everything I can to help him have a, a vibrant, happy, healthy life as he aged and independent in his own home. You know, and that was one of the reasons why I asked you to participate with me in this interview because Many of the women that we work with, many of the women that listen to our podcast, number one, we're all getting older, you right. know, and so I love the whole approach that you have of prevention. But number two, many of us are in that position of having to take care of loved ones, having to take care of either a husband or a parent that is nearing that particular type of, um, I guess you can say, stage in their life. In fact, that's right. becoming very, very much an issue for me right now with my family. So what is one of the problems that you help women such as myself to solve? Well, first of all, stay independent. Um, you know, I've been doing this for 20 years. I've interviewed literally thousands of seniors, their adult children and caregivers over the years. And I have never, I've never had one say to me, I don't want to die in my own home. I want to be forced into a nursing home. No, we all want to be independent and we all want to live vibrantly in our own home. So one of the first things that we need to do is when we're looking at this environment, we hope to stay in hopefully rest of life. How do I make it safe? You know, we're injuring ourselves in epidemic numbers. We have more seniors and baby boomers dying from bathroom related falls than are dying from automobile accidents by a multiple of four. Okay, everybody thinks Bob Saget was a fluke. Uh, not a fluke. It's, it's happening every eight seconds. We lose somebody because of a fall in the bathroom. So just let's be aware. Let's realize that our home isn't necessarily designed to be safe and accommodate us living there happily for our entire life and be prepared to make those kind of modifications. And the first place to start is really the bathroom. Hmm. So what, is, what are some of the mistakes that we are making with regards to our bathrooms and the rest of our homes actually? Well, you know, so with my mom, 
uh, you know, she hurt herself. She lost a lot of her mobility. My dad was having to bathe her. I went to some very well-meaning OTs. And, you know, I'm looking for guidance. And they go, well, put a portable bench in the tub and you can put a handheld shower. And, and I did what I now think of as these Band-Aids. Uh, to try to help mom be safe and and yep we didn't necessarily have to get her up and down off the floor of the bathtub to bathe her but that process of trying to transition into these portable movable kinds of equipment and millions of people one of the biggest remodeling areas right now is tub to shower conversions people are taking their tubs out and putting in showers and as you know I've written a couple of books on this and and I tell I can't make a shower safe it's inherently dangerous to be standing there going through this process of hygiene and trying to clean ourselves. So realizing that we need to make the shift and I believe start thinking about something like a safe bathing appliance, a walk-in tub or a transition tub, something I can use for the rest of my life and be safe and comfortable, not at risk of hurting myself. Now, George, I know you've seen my facial expression right now, right? <laughs> And it's because my father just did exactly what you said. He converted the bathtub into a shower. Yeah. And now you're telling me that that was not really well, It's definitely easier to get into and out of than a bathtub. <laughs> but but now and you may have done this already but but if that's what you've got now look at stabilization within that environment maybe get I don't know if you put glass doors on it uh, glass and aging and standing are not good things uh, a curtain would actually be safer than glass doors think about where you could put grab bars to support him in that process so in particular in front uh, make sure you've got a handheld shower in there that's easy to move and we can locate these things wherever's best for the bather but you can do some things to help make it safer but it's going to remain inherently dangerous just because I have to stand and move around and navigate in and out of that open space in order to try to bathe myself ah okay i'm gonna have to tell him all of this information because <laughs> like i said it was a major adventure for him to do that conversion yeah so now let's let's go back and and think even more preventatively what are some of the what are the five secrets of being young at any age well you know in, in working with my dad right i'm sitting there coming across this huge knowledge. I mean, we have technology coming down the pipeline. Our lives are going to change uh, exponentially over the next few decades. Our life expectancy is just going to ramp up, ramp up because of all these new technologies and science and, and, and concepts that we have to help us um, age more vibrantly and more safely okay so i had to try to dumb this all down so my dad could understand it and i know we don't have a lot of time but but i i've I found out there are really five big buckets and i can put pretty much everything in them all right so for example eat right eat right is where i'm talking about what we do what we expose this physical